All right, welcome everybody. Today we are going to talk about the super exciting topic of retained earnings and how it works with net income. What is the relationship between the two? What do they mean? And how should they show up on your financial statements? Before we get started, make sure you click on the subscribe button. And if you're on YouTube, click on the alert notification so you can be notified when we post new videos. The relationship between these two things is very much connected. It's the relationship at the heart between the income statement and the balance sheet. You're taking your net income off of your income statement and it should fly over and match the exact same number as the net income that you put on your balance sheet. Why does this matter? Because as you make more money in your business, your business is in fact getting safer, isn't it? It's getting better, it's getting more profitable and also it's getting safer on the balance sheet. It's an asset, you're actually increasing the net worth of the business while you increase net income. So what it does is it's in the equity section on the balance sheet. It's not an asset, it's not a liability, it's in the equity section on the balance sheet. And what you have here is you've got this line that's net income and it should reconcile on January 1st, if you're on a calendar year basis, it should be zero. Then at the end of January, you have a number. Why? Because you either made money or you lost money. If it's a negative number, that means you lost money. If it's a positive number, it means you made money. From then on, it's a continuous number that keeps going as a cumulative number throughout the year. It's the net income as of the end of whatever period, whatever month you're in. But then at the end of the year, that net income needs to go and reconcile into retained earnings. What that means is you're going to take the net income and add it to your retained earnings that you had from the last year. Why? Because that net income is income you're retaining. Now, the next step, and this is a little bit more complicated, is if you're an S Corp LLC partnership, you're going to reduce retained earnings by any distributions you took in that current year, because that account also should be zero on January 1st. Net income and distribution start over zero on January 1st. This is a common mistake I see made by bookkeepers and accountants alike, where they don't actually go through and reconcile net income and distributions to retained earnings at the end of the year. This then all of a sudden makes your retained earnings look funky, makes your net income look like it's not what it is for the year. And if it doesn't tie to your income statement, no one's gonna believe you're right. And if your distributions don't end up being zero on January 1st, they're also gonna have a little bit of worry as to whether or not your books are correct. So the right way to do it is net income at the end of the year, distributions at the end of the year, they just go up and net out into retained earnings. And net income, again, is a driver of safety in your business. That's why I always tell everyone cash is king, but profits generate cash. So focus on profitability. You'll be driving that income number. It's going to tie directly to your income statement. And then at the end of the year, you're going to boost it to retained earnings, which is going to increase the equity value in your business. 